स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया and move on to uh, another important discussion as to what exactly is the role of this lagrange multiplier so so far we haven't told anything about this constant lambda not in this example but in general so what is the role of lambda right so so let me briefly discuss the role of lambda so role the role of lambda right which is our our lagrange our lagrange multiplier in isoperimetric constraints right so notice that in this example in the previous example lambda was the radius right so lambda lambda definitely corresponds to some physically or geometrically important parameter in the problem right so lambda corresponds we see that lambda corresponds to a physically or a geometrically important important parameter now we are going to exactly highlight what exactly is the importance of this lagrange multiplier lambda because noting down the significance of lambda will help us to uh, look at the problem from another point of view right so so let us let us look at the functional again so consider my functional j of y which is which is now so i am now including including the isoperimetric constraints within this functional so we consider this functional j of y from integral x0 to x1 which is f of x comma y comma y prime plus lambda times l by x1 minus x0 minus g of x comma y comma y prime right times times we see that this is integral of dx okay so note that so what we have done is this is my isoperimetric constraint that is now included in my functional isoperimetric constraint included in my functional so then so then what we have is let us look at let us look at the derivative of j with respect to l right l being this parameter in the system so when we do that since this quantity or the or this integrand that we have is continuously differentiable up to second order we can very well take the derivative inside the integral right so this is my derivative with respect to l of the following quantity f plus f minus lambda times g plus lambda l by x1 minus x0 right so what i have is what i have is the following right so so this one is integrated with respect to x so then we can use some chain rule let me let me denote this quantity by capital f and we can use chain rule by showing that this this derivative becomes del f del y times del y del l plus del f del y prime times del y prime del l and note that my quantity lambda is can also be a function of l so lambda can be in general a function of l right because l again is a is a parameter but it's a constant parameter right so which means that which means that which means that we can also have derivatives of this form del lambda del l times this is now multiplied by this is now multiplied by l over x1 minus x0 
because we have differentiated with respect to l with respect uh, with respect to l of lambda and minus minus lambda also appears here so minus integral integral of g dx right and then and then what we have is we also have an l sitting here so we once we differentiate and integrate from x1 to x0 so this becomes this is integrated with respect to x plus lambda is outside the integral right because of the derivative of l with respect to l right okay so then what we have is notice notice that when we integrate we integrate this quantity integrate by parts we integrate this quantity by parts we can slightly simplify this expression right we see that we see that we get integral from x0 to x1 del del y minus minus d dx of del f del y prime of f right of f times 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 del y del l times dx right and then and then we also have we also have plus uh, well plus uh, del lambda by del l that is the second quantity of l minus integral l minus integral of g dx dx and then so so this is under integral right dx well dx is already there and then plus the constant of integration lambda right so notice that that f so this is going to be zero because y y is an extremal y is an extremal and it satisfies satisfies euler lagrange equation with 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 my integrand f right and this is also equal to zero because of the isoperimetric 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 constraint right so we have that y is an extremal because so so finally what we get is that everything inside the integral is zero because of the euler lagrange equation and the isoperimetric constraint and the only quantity that survives is the quantity outside the integral which is equal to lambda or so so what we get is that del j del l is equal to lambda so what we have shown is that that lambda is the rate of change of the functional j of y with respect to with respect to the parameter l with respect to the parameter l now or there is another way to look at this result it shows a duality of the isoperimetric problem so which means what we are trying to show is the following what we are trying to show is that there exists there exists a duality a duality for isoperimetric problem there exists a duality for isoperimetric problem and note that so what this means is that we are trying to extremize j subject to i let's say we are trying to minimize j with respect to i uh, sorry minimize j subject to i as the constraint this is also equivalent to saying that we are trying to maximize i subject to j as the constraint right so we can flip the role of i and j for isoperimetric problem or notice the following so so to see this to see whatever i just now said to see that 
note the following note that suppose suppose that my lambda my lagrange multiplier is non zero then then for any extremal for any extremal y for any extremal y i have that f is f minus lambda g for any extremal y my capital f is f minus lambda g is is also an extremal extremal for g which is which is g minus lambda hat f where my lambda hat is 1 over lambda right so which means that the same euler lagrange equation holds for the extremal y with the with the function f or with the function g right with the roles of lambda reversed instead of lambda now we have 1 by lambda for the other situation now how is this possible it is quite simple to see that because because note that j minus lambda of i so this is my functional this is my functional and this is my constraint this is my isoperimetric constraint constraint note that this is also equal to minus lambda of i minus lambda hat j so as if if we were to extremize the constraint on the left hand side it is saying that we are extremizing the constraint on the right hand side with with the roles of i and j reversed right so which means which so which means that the minimum the minimum of f the minimum of integral f dx from x0 to x1 is equal to the maximum the maximum of of integral g dx from x0 to x1 and this can be vice versa right ok so what have we got here so let me just state this duality in the form of a theorem so the theorem says the following so this is theorem number 11 so it says that suppose suppose y produces suppose y produces a minimum respectively a maximum right value for for the functional j subject to subject to subject to i of y is equal to l and lambda is not zero right then let let k be equal to j of y let k be equal to j of y then then y produces for minimum now y produces a maximum for the other problem and for maximum y produces a minimum respectively right so the roles are reversed so y produces a maximum for for i subject to subject to the constraint j of y is equal to k right subject to the constraint so now the constraint is j and the functional is i now there is to quickly look at what this result means let us again revisit the problem of catenary very quickly so what was the problem of catenary so for example in the role in the problem of catenary we were trying to minimize the potential energy subject to the length of the cable being fixed there is another way to state the catenary problem we are trying to maximize the length of the rope subject to the fixed potential energy and that is how the roles are reversed so in the catenary problem in the catenary problem we were saying the catenary is a curve it's a curve along which along which 
the potential energy is minimum minimum subject to the potential energy is minimum subject to fixed cable length the potential energy is minimum subject to fixed cable length and this is also equivalent to saying this is the curve with maximum cable length maximum cable length subject to subject to fixed potential energy right okay so so that concludes the role the discussion on the role of the lagrange multiplier so we can now proceed with the generalization of the isoperimetric problems okay so let us look at the generalization the generalization of isoperimetric problems okay so so let us look at uh, the different cases we could generalize in several different ways the first case could be for functionals with integrands having higher order derivatives right so so problems problems with higher order derivatives problems with higher order derivatives we see that consider consider g of y equal to integral from x0 to x1 j of well let us look at this functional f of x comma y comma y prime y double prime dx okay and we have the isoperimetric constraint so subject to subject to the constraint integral from x0 to x1 uh, g of g of x y y prime y double prime dx okay so we here we assume that f and g are smooth uh, having all the necessary derivatives required for uh, the necessary condition or the euler lagrange or euler euler poisson equation okay so then the necessary condition in this case i am not going to go into the derivation of the necessary condition but the necessary condition in this case is the euler poisson equation which tells us that the extremal need to satisfy the following equation partial partial y prime minus partial partial x or partial partial y prime plus partial partial y right of f is equal to 0 or where f is equal to f minus lambda g right where lambda where lambda is a constant where lambda is a constant okay so we have gen we have given the generalized version of the isoperimetric problem for this case of generalization okay so the generalized version of the euler lagrange equation for this case okay so then let us quickly look uh, well we can look at an example in this category but you know let us uh, you know there are few more points that i want to highlight before we look at an example so so the first issue that i want to highlight that lambda or lagrange multiplier exists or lagrange multiplier in this generalized scenario exists provided y is not a rigid extremal to i right it's not an extremal for the functional i so we are trying to remove the rigid cases or the abnormal cases looking only for the normal cases here okay so lambda exists provided that y is not an extremal it's not an extremal an extremal for the functional for the functional i right and we can another issue to highlight is that we can extend we can extend the result we can extend the result to higher order euler poisson equation higher order euler poisson equation 
that is third derivative, fourth derivative and so on and so forth. And finally, finally how about the abnormal case? For the abnormal case scenario, we need to like we have always done, we need to introduce two Lagrange multipliers lambda 0 and lambda 1, where that includes the case where y is a rigid extremal that is not included in discussion 1. So, in this case y is a rigid extremal, when I say rigid extremal it means that y is an extremal for the isoperimetric constraint or i of y, right. So, the abnormal case can be solved, can be solved by introducing by introducing set of two constants or two Lagrange multipliers lambda 0 and lambda 1. Okay, so, let us quickly look at an example in this category. So, the example I have in mind is the following. So, we have we have uh, the given functional integral of 0 to 1 of y double prime square d x subject to subject to. So, we are trying to extremize subject to i of y which is integral 0 to, to 1 y d x right. This is equal to 1 right. So, this is my isoperimetric constraint with fixed value and I also have the boundary conditions y of 0 is equal to y of 1 is equal to y prime 0 is equal to y prime 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So, four sets of boundary conditions. So, note that this is the extremal to this setup is going to be the solution to the Euler Poisson equation subject to these four sets of boundary conditions. So, I have f is y double prime square and my g is y. Right. So, so what I have is now before even I solve for the extremal we just do not know whether we have an abnormal problem or not or whether y is a rigid extremal or not. Right. So, we do not know. <coughs> so, we want to eliminate the case of rigid extremal. So, let us let us check for rigid extremals. So, we check for rigid extremals. Right. Now, suppose, uh, so if if I have any rigid extremal then y will satisfy the Euler Lagrange equation with uh, so or y will be the extremal to this isoperimetric constraint i of y right. Any uh, any so any rigid extremal extremal will satisfy satisfies satisfies the Euler Lagrange equation with the function g right. This is set equal to 0. So, any rigid extremal satisfies the Euler Lagrange equation with this set equal to 0, where g is this function which is the function for the integrand for my isoperimetric constraint i of y right. So, let us see what happens. Note that g is purely a function of y. So, the first quantity is 0 and the derivative of g with respect to y is 1. So, so, so which means uh, which means that I get minus 1 is equal to 0 or I get a contradiction here right. So, which means that there are no rigid extremals to the problem. So, we are in good shape we are in the case of normal problem category. So, we can peacefully solve for the extremals. Okay. So, so, let us look at the Euler Poisson equation. So, consider my Euler Poisson equation with, with capital F equal to f minus lambda g and I see that I see that after plugging in f is equal to f minus lambda g in the Euler Poisson equation, I simplify to the following O d e 2 times y fourth derivative of x minus lambda is equal to 0. So, I have 
So, I am just writing the final form of the condition necessary condition that the extremal satisfy. So, from here I can quickly find that the solution is y of x is lambda to the power 4 factorial x to the power 4 plus c 3 x cube plus c 2 x square plus c 1 x plus c 0. So, there are there are there are c i's and lambdas are unknown right. So, there are 5 of unknowns in total, but we have also the boundary condition y. So, we use these boundary conditions y of 0 is y of 1 is y prime 0 is equal to y prime 1 is equal to 0. So, we have 4 boundary condition plus we have the isoperimetric isoperimetric constraint that makes it 5 conditions for 5 unknowns and hence the system is fully determinable and students are asked to check that the system can be fully solved and they should find the values of lambdas and c i's as an exercise. So, I am just going to write the final answer. The, the answer is please check that the answer that we get is the following. So, y of x is 30 x to the power 4 minus 60 x cube plus 30 x square. Okay? So, this is what the extremal that we get.